Shalom, Alakim, peace be upon you, and welcome back to the broadcast. This morning we are looking at this week's Torah portion, which is Chayi Sarah. Let me give you the portion summary from TorahPortions.org. The fifth reading from the book of Genesis is named Chayi Sarah. It means Sarah lived. Because the narrative begins with these words, now Sarah lived 127 years. This portion of the Torah is filled with romance and sorrow. It tells the story of how Abraham mourned his wife after her passing and how he procured a wife for his son Isaac. At the end of this portion, Abraham is laid to rest beside his beloved wife. And so our outline kind of looks like this. We have the death and burial of Sarah to start the story. Then we have the marriage of Isaac and Rebekah. And then we have Abraham marries Keturah. Then we have the death of Abraham. And then we have some genealogy of Ishmael's descendants. Portion is not super long this morning, unlike last week. Uh, so it shouldn't take us too long to get through it. I do want to bring up one... Uh, just You may, may or may not find it interesting, but... There is a Jewish tradition that makes this connection about Sarah and Esther as a fulfillment or a partial fulfillment or one of the fulfillments of kind of the prophetic utterance about Sarah that we have uh, in Genesis chapter 17. Now remember, Abraham is the father of the faith, right? He's the father of the Jewish faith. He's the father of the Christian faith. He's the father of faith. And likewise, Sarah, equally as important as the great matriarch of the faith, because she is the one that would birth these nations. She's the one that would birth the nation of Israel. She gives birth to Isaac, from whom Jacob the nation of Israel comes from. And in Genesis chapter 17, we read, And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, her name hadn't quite been changed yet, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be, and I will bless her, and I will give thee a son also from her, yea, I will bless her, And she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Now this spiritual connection uh, to Esther. Queen Esther ruled over 127 providences as queen. And the Jewish tradition goes that that is a partial fulfillment. And that that 127 providences isn't by accident. Because just like Sarah lived 127 years and was promised that kings of people would come from her. Queen Esther ruled over 127 provinces. Just an interesting little tradition that I thought was worth noting this morning. All right. Let's have a look at our portion. It's chapter 23, and we go to 25, verse 12. I'll read from the Hallelujah Scriptures. Let's begin. And Sarah lived 127 years, the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Korath, Arabah, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Then Abraham rose up from beside his dead, and he spoke to the sons of Heth, saying, I am a foreigner, and a sojourner among you. Give me property for a burial site among you, so that I bury my dead from my presence. And the sons of Heth answered Abraham, saying to him, Hear us, my master, you are a prince of Elohim among us. Bury your dead in the choices of our burial places. None of us withholds from you his burial site from burying your dead. So Abraham rose and bowed himself to the people of the land, the sons of Heth. And he spoke with them, saying, 
If it is your desire that I bury my dead from my presence, hear me and approach me, Ephron, son of Sahor, for me. And let me have the cave of Machpelah, which he has, which is at the end of his field. Let him give it to me for the complete amount of silver, as property for a burial site among you. And Ephron dwelt among the sons of Heth. And Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham, in the hearing of all the sons of Heth, all who entered at the gate of his city, saying, No, my master, listen to me. I shall give you the field and the cave that is in it. I shall give it to you in the presence of the sons of my people. I shall give it to you. Bury your dead. And Abraham bowed himself down before the people of the land, and he spoke to Ephron in the hearing of the people of the land, saying, If only you would hear me, I shall give the amount of silver for the field. Take it from me, and let me bury my dead. And Ephron answered Abraham, saying to him, My master, listen to me. The land is worth four hundred shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? So bury your dead. And Abraham listened to Ephron. And Abraham weighed out the silver for Ephron, which he had named in the hearing of the sons of Heth, four hundred shekels of silver, currency of the merchants. Thus the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field and the cave which was in it, and all the trees that were in the field, which were within all the surrounding borders, were deeded to Abraham as a possession in the presence of the sons of Heth before all who went at the gate in of city of his city. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan. Thus the field and the cave that is in it were deeded to Abraham by the sons of Heth as property for a burial site. And Abraham was old, advanced in years, and Jehovah had blessed Abraham in every way. And Abraham said to the oldest servant of the house, Who ruled over all that he had? Please, put your hand under my thigh, so that I make you swear by Jehovah, the Elohim of the Shemayim, that is to say the heavens, and the Elohim of the earth, and that you do not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell, but you go to my land and to my relatives, and take a wife from my son Yitshak. And the servant said to him, What if the woman refuses to follow me to this land? Do I then take your son back to the land from which you came? And Abraham said to him, Beware, lest you take my son back there. Jehovah Elohim of the Shemayim, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my relatives, and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, Take your seed, I give this land. To your seed I give this land. He sends his messenger before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. If the woman refuses to follow you, then you shall be released from this oath. Only do not take my son back there. Then the servant put his hand into the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. And the servant took ten of his master's camels and left, for all his master's goods were in his hands. And he arose, and he went to Aram Naharim, to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels kneel down outside the city by a fountain of water at evening time, the time when women go out to draw water. And he said, Jehovah Elohim of my master Abraham, please meet before me this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. Please note, you got to love Eleazar's faith an attitude, the way he serves his master Abraham, the way, the, how concerned he is to, to do this task for his master. He gets there and he prays to the one true God. He says, Jehovah Elohim, please, for my master's sake, bless this, bless this mission. Verse 13 Continuing his brother, he says, See, I am standing here by the fountain of water, and the daughters of men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman whom I say, Please let your down your jar and to let me drink, and she says, Drink, 
and let me water your camels too. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Yitshak. And let me know by this that you have shown kindness to my master. Please note, I, I would like to have the type of faith <laughs> like, like uh, Abraham's servant here has. That you can pray for a condition as a sign from God. Right? He's like, let it be that the one that I say, please get me some water that she will, of her own accord, offer to water my camels too, then I'll know that your hand is in this. That is massive faith. Let's continue on. Verse 15, And it came to be, before he had ended speaking, please note, sorry, I have to interrupt again. He prays this massively faith-based prayer, that requires true faith in Jehovah. Before he's even done talking, he's being answered. This is when you know God's hand is in something. All right, sorry. Verse 15. And it came to be, before he had ended speaking, that see Rivka, that is to say Rebekah, who was born to Bethel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with a jar on her shoulder. And the young woman was very good looking, a maiden, no man having known her. And she went down to the fountain and filled her jar and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your jar. And she said, Drink, my master. And she hurried and let her jar down to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, Let me draw water for your camels too until they have finished drinking. And she hurried and emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the fountain to draw water, and drew for all his camels. And watching her, the man remained silent in order to know whether Jehovah had prospered his way or not. And it came to be, when the camels had finished drinking, that the man took a golden nose ring, weighing half a shekels, and two bracelets for her wrist, weighing ten shekels of gold. And said, Whose daughter are you? Please inform me. Is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? So please note, Eleazar knows that he has found the most possible perfect woman for Isaac. His master is going to be very pleased, and obviously it's Jehovah's will. But you have this woman who is very beautiful, very good looking, the scriptures say. She was a virgin. So she's pure. Look at her attitude. How hardworking she is. She is a woman among women. And she said, verse 24 to him, I am the daughter of Bethel, Bethuel, Milcah's son, whom she bore to Nahor. And she said to him, We have both straw and fodder enough and room to spend a night. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped Jehovah. And he said, Blessed be Jehovah Elohim of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his kindness and his truth towards my master. As for me, being on the way, Jehovah led me to the house of my master's brothers. Then the young woman ran, and she informed those of her mother's house those matters, and Rivka had a brother whose name was Laban. And Laban ran out to the man to the fountain. And it came to be when he saw the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrist. And when he heard the words of his sister Rivka saying, Thus the man spoke to me that he went to the man and saw him standing by the camels at the fountain. And he said, Come in, O blessed of Jehovah. Why do you stand outside? I myself have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man came into the house, and while he unloaded the camels, he provided straw and fodder for the camels and water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. And he put food before him to eat. But he said, Let me not eat until I have spoken my word. And he said, Speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. And Jehovah has blessed my master exceedingly. And he has become great. He has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and male and female servants and camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's Wife bore a son to my master after she was old, and she has given to him all that he has. 
and my master made me swear, saying, Do not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell, but go to my father's house and to my relatives and take a wife for my son. And I said to my master, What if the woman does not follow me? But he said to me, Jehovah, before whom I walk, sends his messenger with you, and shall prosper your way, and you shall take a wife for my son from the relatives from my father's house. Then, when you go to my relatives, you are to be released from this oath. And if they do not give her to you, then you are released from my oath. And this day I came to the fountain and said, Jehovah Elohim of my master Abraham, please, if you are prospering the way in which I am going, see, I am standing by the fountain of water. And when the maiden comes out to draw water and say to her, please, give me a little water from your jar to drink. And she says to me, drink, and let me draw your camels too. Let her be the woman whom Jehovah has appointed for my master's son. I had not yet ended speaking in my heart. Then see, Rivka was coming out with her jar on her shoulder. Please note, I just don't want to overlook. This wasn't an outward per outward words of prayer. This was Eleazar praying in his heart. God can hear your prayer in your mind and your heart. He says, before I was done speaking in my heart, Rivko came out. And she went down to the fountain and drew water. And I said to her, please let me drink. And she hurried and she let her jar down from her shoulder. And she said, drink and let me water your camels too. So I drank and she watered the camels too. And I asked her and I said, whose daughter are you? And she said, the daughter of Bethiel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. Then I put the nose ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrist. And I bowed my head and worshipped Jehovah and blessed Jehovah Elohim of my master Abraham, who led me in the true way to take the daughter of my master's brother for his son. And now, if you're going to show kindness and truth to my master, let me know. And if not, let me know, so that I turn to the right or to the left. And Laban answered Bethuel too, and said, The matter comes from Jehovah. We are not able to speak to you, either good or evil. See, Rivka is before you. Take her and go, and let her be your master's son's wife, as Jehovah has spoken. And it came to be when Abraham's servant heard their words that he bowed himself towards the earth before Jehovah. And the servant brought out ornaments of silver and ornaments of gold and garments and gave them to Rivka. He also gave costly gifts to her brother and to her mother. And he said to the men who were with him, ate and drank and spent the night. And when they arose in the morning, he said, let me go to my master. But her brother and her mother said, let the young woman stay with us for a few days, at least ten, then you go. And he said to them, Do not delay me, since Jehovah has prospered my way. Let me go so that I may go to my master. Please note, there's probably a sense in which Eleazar knows that Abraham's life is coming to an end, and he's trying to do this last great thing for his master. He wants his master to be comforted as he go- before he goes to the grave about his son and his son's future and so you see he's not wanting to be delayed so this whole let her hang out with us for 10 days thing is not flying he's like no let her come with me now you know there's a sense of urgency that i'm sure he has he wants to be a blessing to abraham and he wants to get this one last task done and he said let us and he's Verse verse 56, And he said to them, Do not delay me, since Jehovah has prospered my way. Let me go, so that I may go to my master. And they said, Let us call the young woman and ask her. So they called Rivka and said to her, Are you going with this man? And she said, I shall go. So they let Rivka, their sister, her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rivka, and they said to her, Let our sister become the mother of thousands of ten thousands, and let your seed possess the gates of those who hate them. And Rivka and her young women arose, and they rode on the camels and followed the man. So the servant took Rivka and left, and Yitshak came from the way of Bair Lahor Raori, for he had dwelt in Agev. And Yitshak, that is to say Isaac, went out to meditate in the field in the evening, and he lifted his eyes and looked, and saw the camels coming. And Rivka lifted her eyes, and when she saw Yitshak, she dismounted from her camel. 
And she said to the servant, Who is this man walking in the field to meet us? And the servant said, It is my master. So she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Yitshak all the matters he had done. And Yitshak brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. And he took Rivka, and she became his wife. And he loved her. Thus Yitshak was comforted after his mother's death. So please note, we're almost done here. 18 more verses to read for chapter 25. But I just think it's a beautiful story. It truly is a perfect story of love and romance. And you have the buildup of, is God going to provide? And then she is more than willing to go. And it's kind of a love at first sight thing. And Isaac, who was clearly, you know, grieving his the loss of his mother, finds comfort in the arms of Rebecca. Chapter 25. And Abraham took another wife whose name was Keturah, and she bore him Zimram, and, Yosh, and Yakshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Yishbag, and Shua. And Yakshan brought forth Sheba, and Dadan, and the sons of Dadan were Ashurim, and Letshim, and Lumanim. And the sons of Midian were Ephan, and Ephur, and Hanak, and Abida, and Eldia. All these were the children of Keturah. Now Abraham gave all that he had to Yitshak, but to the sons of the concubines whom Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts while he was still living, and sent them away from his son Yitshak eastward to the land of the east. And these are the years of Abraham's life which he lived, 175 years. And Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age, and satisfied and was gathered to his people. And his sons Yitshak and Yishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the field of Ephron, the son of Sahor the Hittite, the field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Heth. There Abraham was buried with Sarah, his wife. And it came to be after the death of Abraham that Elohim blessed his son Yitshak, and Yitshak dwelt in Bair Lachai Ro'oi. And this is the genealogy of Yishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Mitzrite, Sarah's female servant, bore to Abraham. And these were the names of the sons of Yishmael, by their names according to their generations. The firstborn of Yishmael, Nabiath, then Kadir, and Avbeel, and Mibsham, and Mishma, and Duama, and Masa, Hadad, and Tima, Yetur, Nesfish, and Kedama. These were the sons of Yishmael, and these were their names, by their towns and their settlements, twelve chiefs according to their tribes. And these were the years of the life of Yishmael, one hundred and thirty-seven years, and he breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people. And they dwelt from Hywila as far as Shur, which is east of Mitzrayim, that is to say Egypt, and she go toward Asher, he settled before all his brothers. And that, my friends, is the end of our Torah portion study this morning. I pray you've been blessed this week, and I appreciate you taking the time to spend the morning with me and to uh, study the scriptures. And um, I'm very, very grateful to all of you. Thank you for listening. Peace and grace be with you all. And until next time, God bless.